This winter, like every winter, the huge influx of water that gushed into the Okavango has brought with it a new set of challenges. The Delta is not a typical savanna ecosystem. You have once a year this massive flood of water coming down, but each year it's different. This year some floodplains will have water, next year those same floodplains will be dry. The flood levels are always different and the lions have to adapt to this environment quite drastically. The lions are actually battling quite hard to be able to hunt effectively at this stage. The problem is predicting where dinner is hiding in this massive network of islands. The lions, though, have come up with a clever and unique solution. Neighboring prides have learned to share hunting grounds. The feature that the lions share such big parts of their ranges with each other, we suspect is very unique to the Delta ecosystem. And this is a behavioral adaptation that the lions had to do to cope with this mass of water that comes down each year during the flooding times. Cooperation seems to improve the odds of finding food. A change in behavior like this is exactly what we would expect. Lions, like all meat-eating mammals, have to be good at adapting to local conditions. But adaptability doesn't always equal survival especially when your home is as unpredictable as the Okavango Delta. For one lioness, there's no doubt that living here is a constant challenge. Sadhu is a 10-year-old female. She lives only with her two cubs since she was forced to go it alone after some aggressive males took over her pride. Living without the protection of a big pride has made Sadhu change her survival tactics. She and her cubs must cover huge distances in the search for food, which makes tracking them all the more difficult for Steve and Ruth. Yeah, the problem is uh, Sadhu's signal is somewhere over there. Unfortunately, it's right across the floodplain uh, where Sadhu usually is. Yeah, sometimes we, I mean, we get really close to her and you just have to give up in the end because there's just water all around. And it's really frustrating when you know she's on this tiny, tiny little island in the middle of this floodplain, but you still can't see her because she's just gone into the thick brush and she's mm. sleeping there. So you just wait on the edge until she decides to get up and leave. It doesn't pay to go straight through the floodplain often pays to go a long way around so that you don't get stuck because you're going to waste a lot of time getting stuck. There's also the problem of getting to her and then, and then getting get stuck. <laughs> we've, we've done that with Sadhu actually, he got stuck right next to her and then had to try and get ourselves out right next to the lines, which isn't a very comfortable experience, I yeah. should imagine. So far she's been pretty understanding, but <laughs> there's always that risk. <laughs> they'll have to persevere. It's important they get close enough to check the condition of the lions to see how well they're coping this winter. Even avoiding the deepest part of the floodplain still means they have to drive through water over a meter deep. Sadhu seems to like it out here. As far as she's concerned, the wetter the better. It's on these almost impenetrable islands that abundant prey animals like lechware thrive, alongside other antelope like waterbuck and reedbuck. The swamp also supports a huge number of birds, like the saddle-billed stork and great white pelican. A fish eagle searches for its next meal from the air.
Given the option, most lions will stick to hunting on land. But Sadhu is different. The pressure to feed her two growing cubs is great, and against all odds, she's become a supreme hunter in the water. Rowan antelope rarely move far from water. They love the lush wetlands of the Okavango, tending to seek cover from the wooded islands. But Sadhu is one step ahead. She has a fully grown rowan in her sights. There's nothing the other antelope can do now, except try and keep themselves out of trouble. Sadhu grips the antelope's face in an attempt to suffocate it. Tombo, the male cub, helps to pin it down. The female cub, Tembe, has made a bonus kill, a rowan calf. Rowan are highly aggressive, with horns that can easily maim an inexperienced lion. The struggle is intense. Tembe must have managed to corner this young rowan in the confusion of the fight. This may well be her first kill in the water. Sadhu has taught her well. Keen not to miss out on her share of the big kill, Tembe returns from stashing her own trophy in a safe place. An adult rowan like this provides around 120 kilograms of meat. This will keep the trio fed for two days. Once they've quickly wolfed down enough to take the edge off their hunger, lions will hide their kill from scavengers. Having killed in the water, Sadhu has to drag a waterlogged animal that weighs more than twice as much as she does. Sadhu's exhausted, cold and wet through. Seeing lions battling to hunt, belly deep in water, is nothing less than awe-inspiring. Lions have existed here for thousands of years. At some point in the past, one lion, perhaps braver than the others or driven by hunger, ventured into the water. It wouldn't have taken long for other lions to follow suit. The ability to adapt was already in the lion's genetic blueprint. Tackling life in a swamp by learning new behaviours like swimming and hunting in the water could have developed within just a few generations. When we started with our project, we knew that the lions have to swim. But we didn't know to what extent the water was influencing their lives. When we found that up to 70% of the home range can be covered by seasonal floodwaters, we realized the size of the problem that they are facing. With the help of the GPS scholars, we've been building up a very accurate picture of how they move in this environment. Basically, every day of their lives, these lions have to cope with the challenges posed by the water. 